Welcome back to 101 East. Ten years ago, 16-year-old Cherdak Gyatso made the journey from Tibet to Nepal. He's been living in Kathmandu ever since. Here's his story in his own words. <laughs> My name is Chorak Gyatso. I'm 26 years old. As a singer born in Tibet, my songs are for Tibetans. That's how we connect. I write my own songs. Tibetans prefer poetic music and subtle lyrics. I want to do more in my future albums to achieve that. I left Tibet because my mother was already in Nepal. I missed her a lot, so I came over. It's better to be outside Tibet because that's the best way our children can receive Tibetan education. As for the hardships of daily life, it's the same anyway. We need to work hard. Life was tough in Tibet, but expenses were low. Over here, even if you make some money, you spend it all. We run a little restaurant. During winter, business is good. Other times, it's not. My family used to be nomadic farmers. I wasn't aware of the world outside. It felt so different when I was exposed to it. I never knew about the different types of people and places out there. I had never heard so many languages. My name is Pema Siki and I am 26 years old. I was in India and I met Chada and uh, we get married and I came here. It's very important to keep Tibetan culture because as a Tibetan, uh, we have to show different from other countries. It's very hard to keep Tibetan culture outside. We have to uh, keep talking in Tibetan language and uh, wearing Tibetan traditional dress. Tibetan identity is very much connected to our language. If someone says he is Tibetan but can't speak the language, he's not a true Tibetan. The story of one Tibetan refugee family in Nepal there. Welcome back to 101 East. We're having a conversation with Tenzing Chapel, who is a Tibetan journalist based in Nepal, with Kapil Shester, who is a professor at the local university, and Michael Dunham, who is an author and Tibet watcher. Thanks for staying with us today. Michael, let me come back to you. Uh, just on the broader picture here, the idea that uh, the Tibetan situation is going to get worse is one that seems to frighten everybody. Um, how do you think this might be implemented? I'm not sure you're going to see a dramatic uh, episode. I think that the way that the Chinese are best dissolving the Tibetan culture is by migrating people into Tibet from the mainland China. You see, right now, Tibetans are a minority in their own country. There's six million Tibetans as opposed to 7.5 million Chinese who have moved in since 1960. And the number is only going to increase with the uh, advent of the railroad going into Lhasa. They have everything in place to make this more and more a land of China as opposed to Tibet. You're, if you have children that you want to learn how to speak Tibetan in Tibet, you have a problem in sending them to school. If you send them to Tibetan speaking schools, uh, they cannot go on beyond second, secondary education. What would you like the Nepali poli policy towards Tibet be? Uh, we would, we would uh, really like Nepal government uh, to uh, support like, Tibetans. If whatever Tibetans want, if they want a better life, like they, they want to choose to go to resell in the US, uh, we ask Nepal government to give a simple exit permit so that we could have a better life. We Tibetans have been living here for over 40 years mm. as a refugee, and we don't see hope of going back to our country. Does that sound like a plausible scenario? Oh, well, you see, uh, another thing that Nepal has not ratified Geneva Convention related to refugees. If Nepal had ratified this Geneva Convention, then the problems could have been solved. Uh, the refugees in Nepal would have felt more secure. And then Nepalese government could have good excuse, a good policy 
a good anchor to develop a policy towards China. The thing is that India, it seems, still does have much more of an influence over Nepal than China does. Yes. Does this mean that as China becomes more powerful uh, and more prevalent in the Tibet area, that that dynamic is going to change and the situation might even worsen? Absolutely. It's going to make the Indians look at Nepal in a different way, and in turn it's going to make China look at Nepal in a different way. I think the one thing that should happen in Nepal is to take the criminality of being a Tibetan refugee. Uh, one of the things that has to be reinstated is a welfare office so that it becomes a legitimate process. It's going to go on anyway, and there's no point in allowing the Chinese to uh, regard it as a criminal activity. Okay. One thing I'd like to say is that the Chinese do not recognize the term Tibetan refugee. The people who are escaping from Tibet are criminals. Is there a, a sense that in Nepal that they recognize that as an issue? Yes, it does. But uh, these um, uh, people in the power doesn't have courage to acknowledge that. But so uh, last month, you see, we had interaction with Nepali government people. They said themselves admitted that they don't have mm. a coherent policy. And so now our suggestion to government of Nepal is that once they ratify that international convention, that refugee convention, that will put Nepal in much more safer position. So Nepal would not be in a position to be bullied by either of the neighbors or some <laughs> other international powers. And then, see, uh, issuing this ID card, issuing the travel document can be regularized and ca can be um, see, made uh, and drafted uh, at par with international standards. Having said all of that though, Nepal has had a, a very long history of treating Tibetan refugees extremely well, of making uh, their lives as easy as possible, of yes. giving them citizenship, helping them go to India. Not citizenship. In the it's, past? Yeah, in the past it was only a specific case uh, about the Mustang guerrillas who surrendered to Nepal. Uh, we have uh, a group of people who surrendered to Nepal. Those were given like uh, Nepali, integrated into Nepali society. And but have you, no, have, you, have you no faith that in the future the essential goodness that the Nepali people have shown to the Tibetans will continue? Um, I guess their policy towards Tibetan will remain like this for some time. But uh, whenever we go to Nepali authorities, like as on, on personal level, mm. Uh, they always say like we don't have law here. There's no existing law regarding the Tibetan refugees. So what can we do? Okay. To stop this here like that. And there we will have to leave it. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. That's it for this edition of 101 East. We'll see you again next time.